What is up, you beautiful people? Welcome to episode three of the Still TBD <laughs> series leading into the half marathon. This past week, we had another unorthodox week. This prep has not started on the best foot, but We've got 12 weeks as of this coming Saturday, and we're gonna make the most out of the next 90 days to be in the best shape possible for the half marathon. This past week, got a new tattoo, pretty sick. What, what, what? It's awesome. I also have one here. It is a beautiful ship on the outside of my leg. Got to see our great friend, Keen Hernandez. He is an amazing tattoo artist. If you are looking for a tattoo, you must, and you love how this looks, and I forget what this is exactly called, um, realism, I think that's what it is. If you love that, he is the best in the game, I swear to you, he is the best in the United States, I, without question, reach out to him. So, to let this heal, I haven't been able to sweat for a week, and today is the first day that I'm able to break a sweat, and we're gonna get into this training. What today's training is going to be is called a systemic metabolic training phase. This is going to be a training that is centered around more of a full body training approach, shortened rest periods. We're not going to be utilizing maximal weight. We're going to be utilizing sub maximal weight to allow for us to maintain the rest periods. Because if I was to use a weight that would take me to failure, I would not be able to retain the 30 to 45 second rest periods that we have today. We have three supersets today. The first superset is going to be a heel elevated safety bar back squat paired with a dumbbell lateral raise. One thing you're going to notice with all the supersets for today is that it is going to be a big muscle group paired with a smaller muscle group. And with those supersets, the first rest period is going to be 45 seconds and then the second rest period is going to be 30 seconds. So basically nothing as I'm going between the exercises and being in my home home gym does allow for me to have an even more accurate tracking because I'm the only one training here. So let's get into the session. I have been, what's the music I've been listening to lately? My phone. I have been listening to a bunch of people who I've never heard of in my entire life, honestly. I've been listening to an artist named Destin Conrad. This album cover is hilarious. The few times I've gone through Starbucks and his album cover has been like very widely displayed on my dash. I'm like, this is a little odd, but whatever. Um, his music's great. <laughs> I like him a lot. I like, Wale the Sage, who you said you had heard before. I've been enjoying his music lately. Well, I will tell just everybody who's listening, the Mellow Bars uh, like Spotify playlist is amazing. I find so many artists I've never heard of on this uh, playlist all the time. I feel like it like renews, whether it be monthly or like bi-weekly, they get new songs or different songs on there. Um, but I find a lot of good stuff on that particular playlist. When you're doing your dumbbell lateral raises, stop going right here. Like if you let the dumbbells come here, it is such a greater likelihood that you're just gonna shrug the dumbbells up and be like, hoo -yah, hoo -yah. let them come to your side and stay more in the scapular plane and then just drive the dumbbells out. Stop having to think that you have to get all this force from this position and I'm doing breaststroke swimming or some shit. Like literally just raise the arms out, be more controlled and you're gonna be so much happier with the gains that you will finally make. Uh, last, last time I had this session, I was like, I think I did 185 for all these sets. Okay. 
to make the safety bar squat more quad dominant. All I'm trying to do, one, is having the heel wedge in place to make it more quad dominant in general. But what I'm thinking about is I'm wanting to keep my upper body as upright as I possibly can, and then I'm breaking at my knees while just allowing for myself to sit back. And then I'm letting my knees slide forward. Once I find this bottom position, I've got really great length to my quad. My intention here is to push my knees back while staying more upright through my body. If I allow for myself to hinge more and sit my hips back, I'm going to have a greater uh, prioritization of my glutes, not as much on my quads. Now, are my quads still doing something? Absolutely, but in this position, I'm much more balanced between the two muscle groups. There's not really a bias necessarily. And so if I'm wanting to have a greater bias towards quads, I wanna initiate by driving those knees forward, getting into the concentric, driving the knees back. Insane. In a normal gym though, this superset, you're like running over to get the dumbbells. Yeah. Instead, I actually get a little bit of a rest period. <laughs> not much though, definitely not much. I should definitely have my watch on. I don't know where it's at. Well, no, it's dead. Lost the charger. Lost the charger. unbreathable, shaky, the whole nine. If you were to ask me how I'm doing, I'd say not good. Not good, Captain. And we're just two sets in, not even a full two sets in yet. We'll be here shortly. Already on the last set though. That's the kicker. It's like, it sucks, but it's fast.
Either the the dead skin or the like the gunk from this, like the duras the I can't even talk. <laughs> Whatever. I just immediate give up. I couldn't even figure out the answer. <laughs> My brain is has no oxygen. Okay, we're done. Time to go home. <laughs> On to the second superset. That's done, I mean, it really was that fast. We're moving at a pretty decent pace. Now we move into the incline dumbbell press paired with the standing calf raise. Hopefully I'm not ruining these pants. That would suck. <laughs> that would be a very inadvertent mistake. All right, quick warm up set, blood's flowing. I've got, I, I, I'm good to go. I just wanna make sure that the rhythm of the uh, movement pattern feels good. So only two or three reps here. Too easy. Okay, we get the facility, we get new stuff. New stuff, clean stuff makes me happy. And you may be saying, Alex, you said it was gonna be a big, small muscle group pairing, anterior muscle groups. Your calf is on the posterior side of your body. I understand that. But if I'm making a pairing with an incline dumbbell press, what small muscle group do I have that is not being impacted by my incline press? My anterior delt is out of the equation. We already got some volume to the medial delt. My rear delt is posterior, so those, these two are gone. My tricep is being impacted by my incline press. And so if I go from the incline press and superset it with my tricep pushdown, my tricep pushdown is going to be hindered in terms of the overall strength that I have, but it's also going to create even greater fatigue for my incline press. And as you can tell from my breathing, I don't need any help with greater fatigue. Draw it outside the lines, but it makes sense when you go through the entire context of the training program. While we were in Texarkana, it was the first time I trained in a public gym in oh, 
forever dump. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> All the equipment was like not well serviced, old. I'm that dork that's just walking around with D handles. I'm training back and I'm just like, I have these two D handles. I'm taking to every piece of equipment. I'm like, they had a couple pieces, but I had already made my mind up that I was going to train back. And they had a couple of chest press pieces that I ended up using the next day. But that was really the only, like that push workout that I had was the only decent session I, I had. My back session was okay, but my gosh, the cables were just horribly laggy and like the, it just needed to be serviced mostly. Um, cables need to be replaced, all that kind of stuff. But it was nice because there was like nobody there. feels good just to move my body. Sucks like being sick and not training sucks, but then like being physically able to train and not being able to train is probably more annoying to me. I will also say there's people in my DMs, I posted on Monday saying that uh, I couldn't train because of my tattoos. And the, the second skin, skin is called Sandoderm. That's what it is. I had people in my DM saying, if I had the Sanoderm on, then I could train. I'm not an expert in tattoos. I have no intention of being an expert in tattoos. I go to someone that I trust abundantly to do my tattoos and to take care of my tattoos. He had advised that I do not train for five to seven days and do not sweat for five to seven days. Leave the Sanoderm on the tattoos. After that, rinse the Sanoderm and then have non-scented soap and rub that around. Then take the Sanoderm off then you can go and train. I appreciate everybody's one willingness to help, but I'm gonna trust the one person that I know takes care of tattoos. For the last 10 years of his life, I'm gonna take his word for it. I feel like if, if I was gonna be fine, Keen would have told me, because he knows that I don't wanna not train. Okay. What do you know? Getting a little too cocky on the chest press. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hello. The, st oh. the star of the party. Oh, you're you co, buddy. Hi, baby. Hi. I love you too. You've been eating some mulch. 
Oh yeah. My second favorite food behind food. <laughs> we just have to stay as close together as possible. Hey baby. Four. What is that? What is that? Oh, we're just being weird. Our third and final superset is going to be leg extensions with the cross cable tricep push downs. First set will be 15 repetitions, second set will be 12, and then the third set will be 10. I'm now realizing that I have not told you any of the repetition allotments for the prior supersets. Everything else was 12, 10, 8 as the uh, repetition allotments for all the other exercises. Relax. I am such a model. Sometimes I program these for clients. Well, I use this when necessary for clients, I should say. And generally three supersets is probably good. Um, four can, you can make it happen if you really wanna be ambitious, but three supersets is probably the, the sweet spot. Um, you can run these type of training sessions for generally up to three weeks. And you wanna see cardiovascular improvements endurance improvements. It's not really a time that you're gonna be chasing for super PRs, but you wanna be able to withstand fatigue better as you have these sessions in place week after week and seeing your endurance improve as you go through it. I'm using it in the context of, I haven't trained all week. I wanna get back to my normal programming. So I'm gonna have an anterior session today, a posterior session tomorrow, and then I'll have Saturday off, and then I'll start my normal programming this next Sunday and get right back into the protocols from there. Hi, baby. <laughs> oh, big stretch. <laughs> I am immobile. Bush family story time. So we were loading the dogs up yesterday to go over to Sue's mom's house. Sue's car is our dog car, but it is high off the ground. So the boys can't jump up in there. We have to lift them up. Tucker is much more apt to allow for me to pick him up. Gus gets extremely squeamish and freaks out when someone's picking him up. So I got Tucker loaded up and I go to pick up Gus. And as soon as my as soon as I lift him off, he immediately freaks out. And I pick him up like under their butt. And as soon as he freaks out, my thumb 
went directly up his butthole. <laughs> it was the most violating feeling I have ever had in my entire life. And I stood there and I could not believe what just happened. <laughs> I literally had my hand out like I had just been, like I, I was going to have to cut my hand off. And she's like, what happened? I'm like, my thumb went directly up his rear. And I do not, I need to like deep, deep clean my hand, my whole, my whole arm probably <laughs> after this experience. And I think both of us were probably traumatized. We made eye contact after and I apologized abundantly that I had violated him so drastically. Um, I'm not sure he's over it because he hasn't really, he hasn't, you know, interacted with me much today, <laughs> but I hope he's forgotten about it. <laughs> it was one of the most disgusting things I've ever, I, I couldn't believe it. It happened so fast. It was like something I couldn't have avoided happening. And I was like, oh my gosh, couldn't believe it. Oh my gosh. But he's amazing. Like I, I find Joey Diaz to be one of the funniest, just organically funny people. And like, I feel like Tony Hinchcliffe is another one who's just like ridiculously funny off the cuff. One, two. We stayed up for the Kentucky basketball game last night, a game they should have very easily won, but ended up going into overtime and losing to the, an unranked Florida team. College basketball is boring to me. It's just like sloppy. It's so much human air. And it's like watching perfect now professional basketball. There's not a whole lot of defense at this moment. Once they get into the playoffs, it's really fun to watch. But then college basketball, college football is the same way to me of just like, can't believe you just made that mistake. Yeah. Sue's mom really enjoys watching Kentucky basketball, so I will continue to watch Kentucky basketball, but just wish they were better. That is a wrap for episode three of the still TBD half marathon prep series. We appreciate you guys watching. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you want to see in the next episode in the comment section, and we'll see you there.